This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Factor and by Athletic Greens. The world today faces so many existential challenges that it's sometimes hard to keep track of them all. But the greatest threat of all is, of course, superheroes being too woke. You can't even step foot in a movie theater or a comic book shop without all your senses being overwhelmed by the, the stench of wokeness. I thought I knew all the world's stories. No! It's, it's really all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. As a proud, straight, white, conservative Christian patriot, uh, it's just become so hard to find anything to read or watch that actually appeals to my sensitivities, which I, of course, refuse to challenge in any way. It breaks my hate-filled little heart. Well, good news. Uh, there's a comic book series that the person you were just pretending to be, it, it, might come, it might come true. You might be barking up the right tree for once. Well, that guy is very excited by this news. Yeah, it's called Alt Hero. And the alt, of course, stands for alt-right. And it's actually been around for a few years now, starting way back in the olden days of 2017. Right after the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally, where dudes with tiki torches shouted, Jews will not replace us, and that one guy murdered a woman with his car. Alt Hero was successfully crowdfunded by Theodore Beale, better known as Vox Day, who has had a pretty wide-ranging career, but is mostly just known for being a self-described Christian nationalist and anti-SJW, who supports white supremacy and was one of the early figureheads of the alt-right movement, along with Gamergate and Comicsgate. Man, you remember Gamergate? It's weird, you don't even hear the term SJW all that much anymore. They've moved on to woke. It means yeah. the same shit. Yeah. Well, but yeah, the uh, I feel like SJW peaked maybe 2018, mm -hmm. maybe even before that. You used to see it everywhere. That's because it became cringe even to those who used it. Uh, In my day, we <laughs> called them SJWs. Whoa, Grandpa, calm down. You're going to get knocked off the platform for hate speech. Anyway, as for the actual content of Alt Hero, it seems the audience for this thing is pretty niche, so there's not a ton of freely available information out there, but uh, heroes, I guess, include a guy who hunts down and beats up undocumented violent criminals and then turns them over to ICE, and another hero whose aesthetic involves a lot of Confederate flags. Uh, there's also some sort of UN superhero team who travels the world punishing people for so-called hate crimes. I'm sure those are and, very specific hate crimes. And, uh, of course, Antifa is a global threat with close ties to powerful world leaders because, you know, anarchists love big government and they love... Conformity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then there, there was also a, a spinoff called Alt Hero Q. Can you guess what that was about? Yeah, it was open... Quail Man! <laughs> it was, nope, it oh. was uh, openly marketed as a QAnon thing. So, yeah. Definitely not woke. That's the SJWs definitely aren't going to like this. So yeah. mission accomplished. But uh, despite Alt Hero cle clearly going after a very specific demographic of readers, it absolutely crushed its initial crowdfunding goals. So Vox Day decided that the next step after taking on the woke comic books industry should be taking on the woke comic book movies industry. Ooh. So that's what he did, or at least tried to do, and it did not go well. Uh, here's the Daily Beast. An attempt to make a right-wing superhero movie has ended in disaster, with $1 million missing in China and a participant facing a federal indictment. Quote, I wouldn't count on us getting the money back, Theodore Beale, a far-right blogger known as Vox Day, admitted to his fans and investors in a video last week. This isn't how Beale's followers thought their investments would go in 2019 when they started contributing to fund a film based on a Confederacy-themed superhero comic book character created by Beale. A trailer promoting the proposed movie, Rebels Run, featured the character Rebel fighting a global police force hunting down free-thinking conservatives. I, I just have to point out that the name alone sounds like an old racist like country solo act. Rebels Run. Yeah. By Johnny Rebel. Uh, isn't that like an actual like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yes, very, very similar. Uh, frequent Tucker Carlson collaborator Scooter Downey signed on to direct. Beale's supporters rapidly blew past an initial $750,000 funding goal, ultimately raising more than a million dollars. That money was supposed to be held in escrow to secure several million more dollars in funding. Three years later, though, the cash is gone, and with it, Beale's hopes for a movie. Damn. But not his hopes for a good time, probably. Well, he doesn't have the money, so. Oh. Not a lot of 
good times can be had. The money's well, gone. It's like when you buy a lottery ticket. The, the, the fun is thinking of all the movies you yeah, could be making. Think about how good. Yeah, now they don't. They're never going to have to deal with the fact that this movie might have been bad because in their heads, it's always going to be the best that it could possibly be. I'm going to make a movie so racist. <laughs> it's going to happen. I would love the idea, like, if a critic saw this and was like, wow, this movie was really racist. And the director was like, yeah, that's the point. Thank you. Thank you. Mission accomplished. Sounds yes. like we did our job. Yeah, that is, I mean, it looks like a rotten tomato, but it's actually considered fresh because of the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, are you triggered? Are you triggered by my racist movie? <laughs> well, well, job well done. I guess I should pat myself on the back. But yeah, no, no alt-right superhero movie. Sorry. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. It's really not, but... It's not a shame at all. Not I, at all. Uh, fuck these guys. This could but, only uh, do terrible things, and it would have been bad anyway. The The trailer that they released, which is very hard to find, but I managed to track it down. It was it was a promotional trailer, so it's like a little bit of original footage just mixed in with like footage they kind of just stole from other stuff. Mm -hmm. But it looked fucking terrible, and I kind of wish it was made because it looks like the kind of movie that would be bad enough to make fun of. Not like, because all the conservative filmmaking happening these days, it's like... It's so it's bland well, and terrible. Yeah, yeah it's not even it's, worth mocking because it's, just it's so... It's kind of boring. Like, the the Hunter movie, I do kind of want to see because that one looks ri just ridiculous enough to, like, uh -huh. be fun. But, like, everything else they release these days, it's just like, okay, 90 I get it. percent of conservative movies are just, uh, f like, fantasies about Christmases they had when they were a kid. There's a lot of those. The, those are like the Kirk Cameron strain. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. There's that. But now they're getting into like action movies. There's one that was like a guy gets hired by some evil cabal to use a time machine to go back and kill Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He fucking headshots him. Yeah. And then he comes to regret his decision, so he has to go back in time and headshot himself. <laughs> it's like a conservative Quentin Tarantino. It's like the, the revenge film flipped yeah. on its head. So that, I mean, that one sounds kind of interesting, but yeah, yeah, most of these, it's just like, oh, cool, you you said that God is not dead, and and he's not. And you didn't cast any people of color on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to distract their viewers. Exactly. Anyway, here's a little section from the article with some more background on Vox Day. There was reason to think Beale and his fans could realize their dreams of going from comic books to cinema, if only through sheer fanaticism. His devoted followers call him the supreme dark lord of the evil legion of evil and describe themselves as his minions. Beale's supporters, who frequently complain about supposed progressive social justice warrior influence creeping into fields like video games and science fiction, had already funded a handful of comic book issues and stirred up a controversy at science fiction's premier awards. Beale's history of racism could have made it difficult for Rebels Run, which stars a character sometimes depicted in a Confederate flag bustier, to find traditional financing. He has claimed that certain races are more likely to commit violence and called one of his foes in the science fiction dispute, a black author, a half-savage. Beale has affiliated himself with the Gamergate movement, opposes women's suffrage, and once described homosexuality as a birth defect. Uh, this guy's an absolute fucking monster, a total evil piece of shit, but just a complete missed opportunity that his own followers call themselves minions, and yet he uh, will not do a conservative minions movie. Yeah. Uh, something that already I'm exists on... I'm tired of all these woke Minions movies. Yeah. If, uh, if so, you know, he's one of those people that looks at the memes on Facebook and, and is confused by what they're actually seeing in the movies. Yeah. Like, I thought the Minions, uh, you know, also said that uh, fetuses were human beings yeah. immediately. I show like, up and they're just going goo goo gaga. Yeah. They can't even fucking As soon talk. as the sperm breaks through the egg. Yeah. So... Uh, these aren't the Minions I was expecting. Yeah, the minions I like are ones that drink out of the old garden hose. The minions I like are the ones that tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. They're willing to say what we're all thinking. Yeah, because they're minions. Lots of love. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, despite having very devoted followers willing to hand over lots of cash to crowdfund his projects, Box Day is extreme even by American conservative standards. Or at least he's just saying the quiet part out loud. Mm -hmm. And apparently finding a bank willing to store that million dollars while the movie was still being developed was enough of a problem or potential problem that he decided to go with Ohana Capital Financial, a Utah-based company that marketed itself as providing banking to the unbankable. Unfortunately, Ohana Capital Financial was also a huge scam of the Ponzi scheme variety with lots of crypto sprinkled on top. Mm. It's basically our favorite kind of scam. Yeah. This scam's got it all. Well, it has a it has a legit sounding name. Ohana, that means family. And Capital Financial? Yeah. That has that's money and money. That's what we're trying to do. Family, we're... money, money. Yeah. 
I don't know who the problem is. Yeah. Here's a million dollars. Uh, but yeah, here's a Coindesk report from last month about what was actually going on at Ohana Capital. The Department of Justice, DOJ, says James Wolfgram, 43, of Spanish Fork, Utah, wooed his victims by portraying himself on social media as a multimillionaire who made his fortune in cryptocurrency. Indeed, Wolfgram's Twitter account, which has 10 followers, uh, declares him to be one of the most well-known entrepreneurs on the planet mm. and a financial advisor that helps more than 10,000 clients each year. In secret, of course. <laughs> <laughs> all, my, all of my clients are right here, off, off camera, yeah. just slightly out of view. Wolfgram is accused by the Ju Justice Department of using images of crypto wallets holding millions of dollars worth of digital assets, a suitcase full of cash, and expensive sports cars to lure victims with his supposed investing acumen. Uh, through one of Wolfgram's companies, Bitex, authorities say he convinced two investors to give him $1.7 million by purporting to sell a high-powered cryptocurrency mining machine, the Bitex Blockbuster, that did not actually exist. Uh, instead, according to the DOJ statement, Wolfram used a fake machine in Bitex's Utah office, which was connected to a monitor that displayed a pre-recorded loop that simply gave the appearance of mining activity. This is amazing. I love it. It's like going to uh, an internet company and it's just like the matrix screens on all computers. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, we talked about this, but uh, the best scams are the ones where Anyone with any sense of like doing your due diligence would walk in there and be like, all right, well, this is this is off. I'm leaving. But it literally sounds like he was showing screenshots to people yeah. and claiming that like you could have just moved the screen. Yeah. And like uh, just pictures of him with money. Yeah. Like uh, standing next to someone else's Ferrari. He's like, well, clearly I know how to I know how to invest your money because yeah. that's me. And that's clearly a Ferrari. That's why people tweeted Elon Musk. Yeah. It's the same fucking reason. I'm telling you. Anyways, uh, yeah, that that was just one of this guy's scams. Uh, others included Ohana Capital, where the $1 million in alt hero crowdfunding went, which Wolfgram used as basically a piggy bank to pay off his other debts. The Daily Beast explains, Unbeknownst to Beale and his supporters, the indictment alleges Wolfgram was deeply in debt to one of his business's other clients. That client had paid Ohana more than $4 million in September 2020, several months into the COVID-19 pandemic, as part of what was meant to be a payment to a Chinese manufacturer of personal protective equipment. Instead of carrying out the transaction, prosecutors allege, Wolfgram spent the millions on his own unrelated business issues. Now, seven figures in the hole and with no PPE to show for it, Wolfgram allegedly used the Rebels Run money to buy the Chinese medical equipment. Soon after that, according to a video Beale released to his fans, the blogger and his collaborators became suspicious and contacted the FBI, sparking the investigation into Wolfgram. I love how there's like potentially a, a third party scam in there with someone like Someone trying to basically hoard a bunch of Chinese PPE at like the height of COVID and going through this other scammer to do it and There's, then getting burned. There's just layers of scams here. Yeah, and they're all just dripping all over each other. It's kind yeah. of gross. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone but, involved seems to be terrible. These are yeah, these are victimless crimes. That's like my favorite kind of one of these is I don't feel bad for anyone involved. Yeah. I don't even feel bad for the people who donated the money in the first place. Like, no, yeah. You wanted to use that money for um something that is bad. So fuck you. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, with that million dollars held up in limbo indefinitely, the alt-right superhero movie is dead in the water. And all the people who donated money to fund it have nothing to show for it. I mean, they can find solace in the community groups online for the coolest cooler and other yeah. failed crowdfunding Also, ideas. these people thrive on grievance. And now they have an amazing grievance at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. like they donated a million dollars and got Absolutely nothing out of it. Well, even better is it's not even the crowd, the crowdfunding guy's fault. Despite yeah. being a terrible person, it's not his fault yeah. because some other grifter was doing his own grift. Yeah, it's grifts on grifts. Yeah, wait, wait, it's just crazy. So you almost got to feel bad for these uh, no, you don't. these donors. Absolutely. But, but you also you 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 absolutely do not have to feel bad for them at all. It's the same people. Like I do, I feel bad about the people who gave Steve Bannon money to build the wall. No, no, I'm happy they got scammed. Yeah, also, he, he got sentenced. He's going to prison for four months, Maybe. supposedly. He'll be a, a appealing yeah. and all that. But yeah. yeah, it is nice to see some sentencing. Anyway, Vox Day, for his part, seems to think that this was all part of a nefarious conspiracy to stop his groundbreaking right-wing superhero movie from being made. And not just him entrusting a million dollars to a sketchy dude without doing even the most basic due diligence. He showed me a picture of him with a suitcase full of money. I mean, which am I to believe? He invented... The world's most powerful Bitcoin mining machine. Look at that. 
It's whirring, it's buzzing, it's shooting it's sparks. It's got green Chinese characters falling down like the screens, just like in the Matrix. Weird. The uh, All the charts that I'm seeing at Coindesk uh, show that Bitcoin's down right now, but his machine says it's skyrocketing. Yeah, that's the magic of it. Yeah. So, I'd be a fool not to keep my money here. But uh, yeah, regardless of whether this was a uh, conspiracy to take down the most powerful film ever or just um, alt-right people being dumb and bad with money, regardless, the SJWs win again. I guess so. Which gotta hurt. Didn't even have to do anything. They just, yeah, by Sat default. Sat on the sidelines. Yeah. I'm gonna watch as this plays itself out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Cool. There's gotta be a section in the Art of War about that. We'll find out. Anyways, moving on to some Halloween news. Ooh, You're spooky, ready to get spooky. scary skeletons. <laughs> Decorating your front yard for Halloween can be a lot more uh, creatively rewarding than putting up Christmas decorations. Same, same, same. But you can, yeah, you can really... really you can get wild really, with it. You can go wild with Halloween. Uh, there's just so many more ways to do it, and you can get really funny and topical with it, too. Well, up in Washington, in the town of Prosser, there's an annual Halloween decorating contest held in the town's historic downtown area. And this year, it's making national news for a very funny and also very dumb reason. Here's a local NBC, here's a local, uh, NBC affiliate with uh, some background on all this. Historic downtown Prosser announced a decorating contest encouraging the community to design a display for Halloween. Prosser City Hall decorated its display to feature Karen's Garden, dressing up a scarecrow as a Karen with a shirt reading, Can I Speak to the Manager? The annual fall decorating competition awards traveling trophies to each year's winners. This year, judging is between October 15th and October 23rd. Winners are selected for overall and best theme, which will be announced October 28th. Hey, and looking at the pictures of Karen's Garden's I mean, it's a it's a clever little Halloween display. I mean, who could possibly have a problem with this? Well, Karen would. We are several years into the term Karen being a widely popular term for demanding and entitled women, and we're just now seeing what may be the most perfectly meta example of Karen behavior ever. Seeing a generic Karen joke, uh, seeing a generic Karen joke, and feeling so personally attacked that you run to the media. To let them know that you are the specific Karen being mocked. That's me. That's me. I'm Karen. Uh, I'm about to prove this thing right. Here's more from the local news. The city of Prosser announced on October 17th that the display had been taken down and pulled from the competition because it was inconsistent with the spirit of the competition. Later that day, Prosser resident Maricela Sanchez told NBC Right Now that she believed the display was targeted and meant to look like her. Sanchez claims the display is part of ongoing harassment against her for her affiliation with FutureWise and its opposition of the city's proposed construction bond for a new City Hall campus. This past weekend, City Hall entered an annual Halloween decorating contest with a ghoulish scarecrow dressed up to look like me, said Sanchez. Prosser City Hall engaged in targeted public harassment of a private Prosser citizen on public grounds. They created a grotesque effigy to publicly humiliate a city resident as retaliation for opposing a city bond proposal on the upcoming ballot. That's me. The, the the scarecrow in the Momo mask, that is clearly me. I look like a Momo mask. It's it, like in a cartoon, it would be her complaining about it. And in the midst of complaining, looking exactly like yeah. the, the thing that was not actually supposed to look like her. But she's filling the role like, through her action. This scarecrow could not be any more generic. It's like it's a it's, it's, it's a bunch point, of it's a bunch of trash bags. With some rubber gloves and a, a scary mask. I mean, now that you're mentioning it, the resemblance is uncanny. It's it's it, clearly they were targeting my own body, which looks like it's made out of a bunch of trash bags filled with old newspapers. I've been stress eating. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it is it's it's like the Karens that get mad at stuff like this. I just imagine the same people who like make some off color or blatantly racist joke and they're like, what? I'm just joking. But yeah. like here, something that's completely unrelated to them. That they're, they're like. Excuse me? Yeah, uh, I'm sure the backstory with this woman and her city council and whatnot Disculpe? Prob probably goes back quite a ways. So, who knows? This is just the last straw. Yeah, I mean, probably looking for a reason to snap, but yeah. also not doing yourself any favors. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of uh, Karen behavior, we're not sure this next story necessarily qualifies, but it certainly involves a woman taking her spitefulness to extreme levels and being completely unapologetic about it. Now, on its surface, this might even sound like a cool crime, but it's mostly just a very creative crime. 
Now, the economy these past few years hasn't been great for a lot of people, and the result has been renters getting evicted and homeowners getting foreclosed upon. I mean, it's, it's sad, and a lot of communities have come together to protest some evictions. But recently, one woman in Massachusetts got very creative with how she protested an eviction, and the reporters at MassLive.com, they got a little creative with their reporting, too. A Hadley woman faces multiple assault charges after allegedly unleashing a swarm of bees onto Hampton County Sheriff's Department deputies attempting to serve an eviction notice in Longmeadow. Rory S. Woods had more than one bee in her bonnet <laughs> when she rolled into the driveway of 49 Memory Lane wow. on the morning of October 12th, according to court records. And it is Memory Lane. I looked That's, it up. That, they should have a court of memory there. Yeah. Instead of a standard eviction notice, deputies found themselves targets of a sting operation. <laughs> Deputies arrived at the $1.5 million home to serve eviction papers on the homeowner, Alton King Jr., but were met with a cluster of protesters instead. During this time, the officers secured the premises and waited for Mr. King to return as we were told that he was at court trying to delay the eviction, reads a report authored by Deputy Sheriff Daniel H. Soto. Minutes later, an SUV towing a trailer pulled into the driveway and a woman emerged from the driver's seat, according to Soto's report. At that time, a female later identified as Rory Susan Woods exited her vehicle and went to the back of the trailer and started shaking beehives to let the <laughs> bees out. The report states, Deputy Michael Jocelyn attempted to stop Woods, who successfully freed one of the hives by breaking the cover, causing hundreds of bees to swarm around. Deputy Jocelyn was stung in the face and had to retreat. Woods, 55, then donned a beekeeper's suit and began liberating more angry bees, <laughs> Soto reported. She rolled three more large hives off the trailer and carted them to the entryway of the home, situated on a stately cul-de-sac. Officers at this time attempted to stop Woods, but were attacked by the bees, Soto's report reads. I mean, we joked about, you know, but what if, you know, he punched him with bees on his hands? <laughs> yeah. And then it kind of came true. Bees are a, they're a great weapon that no one really thinks to use, but yeah. If I'm supposed to be evicting someone from their home and there's like 10,000 fucking bees, angry yeah. bees... No, I'm not going in there. In the old days, they'd be like, you know what? Fine. It's yours. I got stung by a bee for the first time in like 20 years, like a couple months ago. It hurts. It's I'm, very painful. I, uh, I'm, I'm around bees frequently. Uh, you just you just act like you're, you're no, not No, that's even what there. I always do. This was a surprise. This bee... This I got, you swatted it. No. Hmm. Well, okay. So... Okay. Well, here comes the truth. Here's the truth. I was outside, there was, it was during the summer, there was a lot of bees around. I go inside, I go inside, into my house, long walk, all the way up the stairs, up to my office. I feel something on my back, I, I assume, or it's on my neck, I assume it's a fly. So I swat at it, and it's a fucking bee that attached itself to me and followed me into the house. Yeah, and if you had done nothing and just let it hitch our ride, it would have been just fine. I thought it was a fly. Why would there be a bee on my body inside my house? There was literally a bee in your bonnet. There was. Yeah. They haven't been stung in a while because I treat them with respect and admiration. So did I. I treated them with too much respect. They got too comfortable. They thought they could hitch a ride on my shirt. Mm -hmm. And I had to I had to put one of them down. Hard. I plant and more fucking hurt. I plant more flowers, so there's more things for them to go after. I mean, I yeah. I'm I'm trying to start a flower garden. The, the bees deserve as much nectar as as uh, as I can give them. I'm playing the long game because one day I'm going to end up like this woman. Yeah. If, if I need the bees, I want them to be on my side. I, I, I was vaguely curious about beekeeping, uh, all, you know, all the news about like bees uh, being in trouble. I was like, oh, how hard would it be to uh, start my own beekeeping operation? Uh, apparently very fucking hard. It's a, it is extremely difficult, and everyone who does it says, don't get into this. This has ruined my life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you already have pets, so you do have lives uh, in the balance. But yeah. it just seems like, you know... You'd have to be an enthusiast. Yeah, you, it's it's not something you get into casually, is, is what I've found. It'll turn into a business where people are calling you up and be like, hey, I got these bees over here. Come get rid of them. Luckily, I brought my own queen. That's what you need to do. That's really <laughs> what you were going after. Luckily, you just want to carry around a queen. <laughs> a queen ready to go. <laughs> oh, good thing I have a, a second queen here. That one day, Elliot, on the news, <laughs> it's going to be like, luckily, there was a good guy with a bee. <laughs> good guy with a bee. <laughs> Anyways, apparently a few of the cops were allergic to bee stings and had to go to the hospital. Um, oops. Luckily it wasn't fentanyl. It was just bees. Yeah. <laughs> what if these bees had fentanyl on their stingers? Could be. What if yeah. there was what if they were like just pollinating fentanyl plants? Check your children's Halloween bag for bees with fentanyl on their stingers. Uh-huh. Uh, when Woods was told this uh, by the cops arresting her, she reportedly said, Oh, you're allergic? Good. <laughs> oh, yeah. She should become mayor for the day.
Do you think I would have done? Would I have even bothered if I knew that at least a few of you? She should have knocked a few more off when they said yeah. that. Uh, as for why she had so many bees ready to deploy, well, she's a beekeeper. Though intentionally shaking your beehives and angering the bees to deploy the bees as a weapon seems like it would violate the beekeeper's code. It is the last bit of defense that you have. Yeah, it just seems like, I mean, she probably put in years of work cultivating these beehives and then to just, I mean, she had to have been pretty mad about this eviction. Which do not point weird. those bees at anything you do not want to destroy. Yeah. Uh huh. So this story has a lot of unanswered questions, obviously. Uh, for one thing, this wasn't some poor family getting evicted from their apartment or something. This was a, a guy whose relationship to the beekeeper is unclear. She's his queen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, getting evicted from a $1.5 million house that he hasn't made mortgage payments for since 2018. And thanks to Zillow, we can see that this is a massive 9,500 square foot, seven bed, nine bath, McMansion with its own indoor, indoor basketball court. Yeah, it's got a fucking full, full basketball court, not even a half court, a full court. These are the type of people who have free time to take care of bees. I guess, but the bee lady doesn't even live there. This is someone else's house. Yeah. Like, I can understand. Don't get high on your own supply. I can understand maybe if you're being evicted from the house that you are currently using to cultivate these bees, you, you well, unleash the now bees. I'm but this is someone else's problem. Now I'm wondering if this is like a, a bee menace for hire. Maybe. Yeah, Could that'd be, be. cool. Yeah. I'd like that. Who do I know that has bees? Oh, I, oh. I, I know a lady that's got some bees. Yeah, everybody. They all have her on speed dial. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, losing your home obviously sucks no matter what, but it's it's very weird that not only was there a massive crowd of people protesting this specific eviction, one protester even got herself arrested on multiple felony charges for attacking police with deadly bees. Yeah, and she, she has been charged with uh, assault with a deadly weapon, parentheses, bees. Odd that the cops only shot at the Africanized bees. That is strange. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've got more news coming right up in the headlines half of the show. But first, this episode is sponsored by Factor. Fall is officially here, and with a new season comes a new routine. But if you're like us, you get sick of the same old, same old day after day. Luckily, Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery makes it easy to switch things up with 30-plus meal choices per week, 36-plus weekly add-ons, and an option to add protein to select vegan and veggie meals each week. Whether I'm out and about all day long or just cozying up at home, Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals make it easy to fuel up fast with meals that are delivered ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. Savor the harvest season with Factor's Pumpkin Feast for Two, featuring fall's most craved flavor. Pumpkin! Uh, this ready-to-eat bundle helps you make the most of autumn with a full spread that feeds too. Date night, anyone? Factor's rotating menu has tons of fall options every week, too. Add seasonal favorites like three bean vegan chili, the apple mustard pork chop, and Tuscan tomato chicken into your rotation to spice things up. Uh, again, going into this, uh, I don't want to say crunch, bad term, but uh, going into like November and December, end of the year, it's getting dark too early. Yeah. I don't want to cook after work. Factor is, I was uh, a Factor user before they even sponsored the show, specifically during like that November, December time when it's like the last thing you want to do after work is cook. And these are the best microwavable meals that I, either of us have ever had. Absolutely. Yeah. Factor now offers 30 plus meals per week and 36 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep me going no matter what's on the on the schedule. Uh, the, the juices are damn good. Mm -hmm. Factor is cheaper than takeout, seriously. And thanks to their commitment to ingredients with integrity, you can actually feel good about what you're eating every day. Factor has endless options, however you like to eat. Choose from keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus to get chef-crafted, dietitian approved recipes you'll look forward to every time. Not only do Factor meals save me time, but they keep me satisfied. Their chef-crafted recipes are packed with restaurant-quality flavor. It's so good, I can't even believe that it's dietitian approved. So head to go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird60 and use code weeklyweird60 to get 60% off your first box. That is code weeklyweird60 at go.factor75 dot com slash weekly weird 60 to get 60 percent off your first box and this episode is sponsored by athletic greens a product that we both use literally every day uh, this was pitched to us as uh, a health supplement it's better than pills and capsules at getting you the vitamins minerals and probiotics that your body needs mm -hmm. sounds great sign me up but we did not expect it to be delicious nor did we expect it to feel so good uh, starting the day with a scoop of ag1 has honestly become more important than having that first cup of coffee at this point. I take it before the cup of coffee. I was tired of all those pills. The older I get, the more pills I have to take. And AG1 makes it simple. Mm. Done with one sip. 
So look, what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All the things. And unlike a lot of multivitamin supplements that go just right through you, these are high quality ingredients that your body is actually gonna absorb. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost him $100 a day. Athletic Greens costs less than $3 a day, and you're investing in your health. It's cheaper than your cold brew habit, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com weird. Again, that is athleticgreens.com weird to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Links, again, always down in the description below. Now time for the headlines half of the show where we just read the headlines. Yeah, but just the craziest <laughs> shit from around the world. It, it's all self-explanatory, really. David Letterman used to do something like this. Did we steal it from him inadvertently? I, or maybe it was Carson. I don't know. He did top tens, uh, Letterman did. Well, whatever. Anyways, it's ours now. Fuck off, old man. Driver accidentally reverses into 700-year-old toilet at Japanese Buddhist temple. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. If I had any karma left. Oh, I spent it all. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It can't be good for karma. I hadn't thought of that. No, um, it's gonna be terrible. Yeah, these seven hundred a seven hundred year old toilet, which I assume is just a, a trough in the ground. Mm. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this wasn't just some guy either. This guy worked for the Historic Preservation Society oh in my charge gosh. of keeping this 700-year-old temple in the best possible shape. The act of inadvertent vandalism is punishment enough, I'm sure, for this poor soul. He's coming back as a worm. No. Would you date me if I was a worm? <laughs> well, baby, I'm a worm. Oh, man. Yeah, that's... uh specifically a bad thing to happen specifically for he that reason. He literally religion. just like shifted, he thought he shifted into drive, but he shifted into reverse. And then well, just, <laughs> look, if this was America, he would have been tearing through a farmer's market. So, you know, yeah. at least it's an old toilet. It's not a bunch of people it's on a Saturday morning. Toilet. This is part of toilet history. Well, now it's... It needs to be preserved. It's got a new little note in history. Yeah. In 2022, a uh, confused man uh, just drove his car through this toilet. People are going to be like, you know, I feel bad. I would leave, you know, some well wishes at the spot where he destroyed the toilet. Yeah, I'd definitely do, uh, you know, the rituals. Again, I think <laughs> the act is punishment enough. Obviously not intentional. This is, yeah. Probably it, ruined this guy's life. It is a shame-based culture over there. And um, yes, he will be carrying this shame with him for, for some time, I imagine. It's like the guy that grew his fingernails really long. It's like, you can't cut him. Then you're just a guy. Yeah. I think he did eventually. They had to use like a fucking reciprocating saw. Yeah, like Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. And <laughs> by the time he got it off, like the hand that had the, the nails on it was so like warped and fucked up from... Because he hadn't really moved his fingers even for like 30 years. And so he's, the hand is still useless. But now it's not remarkable or notable in any way. Unlimited strangers though. <laughs> yeah, he's got that going. Yeah. You know, you sit on your hand. Feels like somebody else. Mm -hmm. This guy, no problem. Always. Yeah, always, every time. Mm -hmm. Weed is coming to Circle K gas stations in U.S. next year. And, uh... In Florida. Very oddly enough, in Florida of all places. Which I... I get, so it it's is, a medical it's state. It's medical. So this is so weird. Like, I, I, I do... Every time some news happens with weed in America, I, I feel older and more out of touch. Because, like, when I was a medical marijuana patient in California 15 years ago... It was absolutely not something they would ever put near a gas station. Like you had to get buzzed in through like three separate doors. Like it was a, yeah, it was a kind of tense uh, thing. This news, although on its face seems like a great idea, I feel bad for the the person who works at the gas station who it's like getting more work just like tossed on your well, plate. It's so uh, I think they do this for legal reasons too. But like it's they're adding them on as like a separate like structure attached to oh, it. So okay. it's not, the Circle K employees aren't going to be like, having know, to like, oh, hold selling. on, I'll put gas on the pump, but first I, I have to. And I think they appreciate it because they'll be selling more like 
uh, Doritos, Doritos, and yeah. uh, Takis and Funyuns and whatnot. Uh-huh. Um, hot dogs. Yeah, it's it's good for business. But yeah, it'll have a separate entrance, and I, I don't know what the verification is like in Florida, because like. <laughs> Hey, it's me. Yeah. That's the verification. Yeah, report. in LA, like they'd have to like you'd give them your information. They'd go into some like database. It was like it was not easy. It's not the kind of thing you'd want like at a gas station. I mean, maybe I, I think if you looked around on the computer that the guy was doing it, it was like the same thing as the yeah. the scam guy. Hackertyper.com. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is. I mean, I guess this is great. I think that it's obviously a bit weird. It, it, it's confusing optics for the state specifically because, like, weed is both a felony and legal. Yeah. Because of the medical. Uh, Florida is one of the one of the states I would, if I was going to open up a medical marijuana dispensary, Florida would be toward the end of the list for states where I'm going to be sure that this isn't all going to be seized mm-hmm. in some, uh, you know in some raid that I can't do anything about. Yeah, I mean, DeSantis literally just did that with voting rights. Yeah. So, hey, you guys are- You can do weed. You're all allowed to vote. (laughs) Oh, did you vote like we said you could? Well, you kind of broke the law. You broke the law and we're coming for you. That's what he's going to do with the weed. Yeah. Every circle K. I wouldn't trust it. Mm -mm. Kanye West wants to build his own mini city called the Yeko system. I'm so tired Kanye Epcot. Yeah, it all makes sense. Like, he's he's got the Kanye- Epcot. He's got, yeah, Yepcot. He's got uh, Donda Academy. Um, but he's like, he's like Elon, where like he has ideas. Yeah. But he has absolutely zero follow through on some of it. Some of it he does obviously execute very well. Um, but well, it's uh, like with fashion, he's built quite a fashion empire. But he, at this point, uh, all of the companies he was using to actually manufacture and sell the goods, every single one of them is broken off from him, imp- including his favorite, uh, which I never pronounced correctly, but Balenciaga. Balenciaga? Yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, also, I'm sure, well, they just dropped him, but I'm sure that they weren't happy because the only stock image of Kanye from the, the past the, the two grill. weeks <laughs> is the B- Balenciaga grill. Yeah, it's bad for business. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, he's had these ideas for a long time. He had that that PDF, like, 10 years ago, the, the Donda, like, empire he was building. Yeah, the like, plan. Getting into all sorts of, uh, like, every possible industry. Um what that's just like, like that's it, weirdo busybody CEO mentality when you're not actually in that position. Yeah. There's like a leaked video of Howard Stern uh, from like 15 years ago doing like a yearly thing with his employees. And it's just the most uh, like I tried. I'm not a real boss. But, yeah. I, but here's a bunch of graphs that I think look really pretty with ideas that are very simple. It's just like one of those things where it's like. It's great that you have motivation to do these things. Mm-hmm. Great that you're thinking outside of the box, but you should really get people who know how to execute on these. And that's why, like, when he works with Adidas, it gets done really well. Right, but he's not, not working, working with, them, with them anymore. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be so, calling up uh, Ohana Capital Managers for some money in a so second. The, the only ecosystem I can see actually succeeding would be something along the lines of, like, Waco. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Uh, Something like that. Some some sort of a cult compound. I mean, the 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 resources are already in place right here in LA with that school that he's like. Yeah, that sort of school has uh, some very serious cult vibes, and um, you expand that into a whole ecosystem, and you've got. Uh, Welcome to the ecosystem. You got you got a cult. I am a serious person. Welcome to the ecosystem. The ecosystem. Uh, also, it came out today. Like I guess Charlemagne the God. Uh, was was oh, yeah, sick. Like, like, Kanye, Kanye's complaining about Pete yeah. Davidson's ten inch dick. Man, my ex wife is fucking a white man with a ten inch dick. Can and, you believe it? Yeah. Um. He also the the full Piers Morgan interview was released. Uh, he calls Joe Bi- Joe Biden an, an R word for refusing to uh, for refusing to listen to Elon Musk's ideas. Uh. And, uh. R A or R E R E. Oh. Okay. And um. And uh, yeah, he. That thing he's been doing in interviews, like, yeah, 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 when he feels he's being interrupted, even though he's just rambling and the interview is trying to keep things, like, you know, well, under you're, control, but he's like, la, 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 because you're ruining his train of thought. Yeah, uh, but Piers Morgan threw a la, la, la back at Kanye at one point in the interview because he was getting interrupted by Kanye. It was a real real meeting of the minds, Piers Morgan and Kanye West. Like two three-year-olds arguing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've still only seen, like, clips from it, but it is a two-hour interview. And uh, he really landed the ultimate look into the mind of Kanye West. And um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's much going on there right now. It is. 
It is. There's so, just symbols clanging together. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if you go on like the Kanye, evil symbols clanging together. If you go on like the Kanye subreddits, he's still got diehard fans. Like maybe he just hasn't clarified his uh, thoughts yet. Maybe they're just waiting for him to, you know, clarify what he actually means. And it's like, no, he's he's just he's gonna do something brilliant any moment now. Yeah. Mm. Nah. Wikipedia tells users to be more specific when searching 2022 UK government crisis. <laughs> Which crisis did you mean? Did you this... mean the one from the summer where uh, Boris Johnson was booted from the party after numerous scandals that he oversaw? Or was it the one from later on when Liz Truss was appointed prime minister and booted uh, 44 days later uh, and really only did technically seven days of work and passed or tried to pass some of the most uh, austere, uh, controversial laws in modern British history, causing a civil war within the Tory party. Which one was it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be any. Uh, there's, that, that, there's still that, months left in the year, too. The, the original Wikipedia page, unreadable. Too many trees. Yeah. Just, it's crazy. Pitting Liz Truss against lettuce is offensive to lettuce, says man with trash bin helmet. This is a guy we talked about a long time ago. I think it was on the old channel. Oh, but maybe. the original, uh, it was like the 2017 uh, general election in the UK. Is, uh, he, was, he was known as Lord Buckethead oh, yeah, back well, then. Of course, I know Lord uh, Buckethead. Yeah, he looks sort of Darth Vader-ish, but with a very long bucket-like head. He ran against uh, Theresa May in that election. But he has he's rebranded himself now as uh, Count Binface. Like a bin, like a trash bin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but still the same guy. It's it's kind of like uh, Papa with Ghost. Just every album, new yeah. new Papa. You got to reinvent yourself a bit. Yeah, exactly. Like Lord Bucketface. Okay, we've seen it. But this new guy, Count Binface, a lot of cool ideas. Yeah. A lot of very cool ideas. Yeah, really, uh, you know, we times like these, we need Count Binface to mm -hmm. uh, bring dignity and and uh, respect back to the United Kingdom. I do like on the last episode, like we made a comment about Liz Truss breaking the glass ceiling and someone in the comments was like, hold on, you're forgetting Theresa May and Margaret Thatcher. Thank you very yeah, much. You you made that comment. I would have never said that. But also, um, Margaret Thatcher, she broke the glass ceiling for uh, satanic demons being mm -hmm. uh, prime minister of the UK. Uh, you didn't get a human woman in the prime minister's slot until Theresa May. So let's uh -huh. be clear about that. Yeah. She, was, she really broke the mold for goblins, though. <laughs> Speaking of Liz Truss, yeah. Liz Truss biographers are back to the rewrites after Prime Minister quits. Uh, they, she was, she had a book that was supposed to come out in December. Yeah, no, that they, was like based on her like. This was the, her official biography. The the writers of it, like it was a week ago. They they tweeted. They're like, all right, we just finished this up. Look for this on shelves. Uh, this December and just like the so fastest we can get it out. Even the book art, it was like the unexpected rise of Prime Minister Liz Truss. And they're like, well, we can't. We got to do some edits now because yeah. uh, and honestly, the book will probably now be a lot more interesting than it would have been otherwise. Uh, if I was British, I would be getting this book for Christmas because, as you'll remember, my dad always buys me like yeah, yeah. wrong media. Like yeah. the Madam, Madam President, President. He, yeah. the, where they printed all of the uh, Hillary Clinton. I love that shit. It's like living in a little bizarro world. Oh, yeah. The last Christmas he got me uh, Betty White Turns 100. That's a good one. So the Liz Truss book is like perfect. I With the Betty White one, like I and I knew they were jinxing it. I, I kept seeing that on like supermarket shelves. I'm like, well, she's not 100 yet, guys. Yeah. It's like every time like you start seeing some like posts about like Ukraine kicking Russia's ass. It's like a day later. They like yeah. it's like, oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. James Corden branded tiny cretin of a man and banned from NYC restaurant over alleged treatment of staff. Yeah, he's pretty, he's, he's sort of the male Ellen at this point. Um, he Maybe is, worse. I don't know. Yeah, he is just sort of known for being a uh, very difficult customer, particularly in restaurants. I guess at this guy's restaurant, this very fancy New York restaurant, he was just like, and props to this guy for defending his his wait staff. He's just like he's verbally abusing these people yeah. for making like simple mistakes that happen at any restaurant. Um, and yeah, and, ju and just this being news this week, it brought up all the the previous little uh, James Corden. The, uh, the previous ones were all kind of like hearsay. Uh, they were all just like people on Reddit or anonymous if posters. You, if but you, if you've lived in L.A. long enough, you uh, chances are you have a story about Andy Dick and you might have a story about James Corden. Does he? I thought he was in New York. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because someone was talking about... No, someone... Uh, there was a story about him here in Los Feliz. Uh, Los Feliz, sorry. Uh, and uh, 
at a restaurant there that's really popular oh. and like screaming at the people because he came there when it was closed and demanded to be served. And they're like, sir, we open in like an hour. We can get you a table, right? Sir, you can yell at people like that in New York City where everyone yells about everything. But here in Los Feliz, the vibe <laughs> is... People can hear you from chill. like three blocks away. Please yeah. calm down. We've got a quiet little hamlet of a community here in Los Angeles where yelling's just not going to get you very far. Sorry, buddy. Uh, yeah, I, the, I would love for you to tell the the audience if they haven't heard of the airplane story. But yeah, yeah, it's a longer story. I'll, I'll just, paraphrase it, yeah. but uh, I can't remember where this appeared originally. And again, this is like this could be false, but I I choose to believe it's true. But someone was like, I was on a plane. And uh, I saw James Corden come in. He was, you know, keeping to himself, sat down in first class. And then, uh oh, here comes a woman holding a crying baby. And she's seated right next to James Corden. And I thought it was so cool how even though he's a famous celebrity. He put on his you know, noise canceling headphones. Yeah, he just put on his noise canceling headphones and kept to himself. Didn't complain one bit. And then when the plane landed, uh, the lady with the baby, she got up and started uh, unloading her luggage and then uh, said to James Corden, so are you just going to sit there or are you going to help your wife and child get off the plane? Because it was it was his wife and child that he was uh, just completely ignoring just for an entire flight and not helping. Covered to... in cumbersome bags while yeah. a baby is, is right there. And he's just like, fuck off. Yeah. Um, it, it like he doesn't have re- he's quit. He already quit the show or whatever happened behind the scenes. But like send him back. No, but they don't want him. I know. But send him back. Make him the new prime minister. There was like I like like 15 years ago or something that show that he got big on. He like was at an award show and complained that they weren't nominated enough. Yeah, he's always been a twat. Uh, there's a great I w- before I knew the context of it. I I, I was kind of disappointed in this clip. But there's, there's a clip of um, uh, Patrick Stewart at some British award show like 10 years ago, like being an absolute fucking dick to James Corden. And like at the time, I'm like, damn, Patrick Stewart. You're... But now, like, what? What do you know? Sense. The, what do you know? The backstory of like how just despised this man is is like, oh, he's he's probably saying what a lot of people wish they could say. Mm-hmm. Cool. I hope that uh, he doesn't get another show, and that I don't have to see him on TV ever again. Send him back. Mm-hmm. Texas schools send parents DNA kits to identify their kids' bodies in emergencies. Say, Texas, they're not doing nothing about all the school shootings. They're yeah. they're. They're doing very helpful things like uh, we're here's we're going to need your kids DNA and fingerprints so that um, in the event that they are uh, just absolutely eviscerated by a high powered rifle, you'll know sooner rather than later, um, you know, whether their body is down there or not. So don't say don't say we're ignoring a problem here in Texas. We take this very seriously. We are a serious state. This sounds like a solution that, like, all of the angry people at PTA meetings, uh, they were like, okay, all right, look, we're not going to ban guns, so let's all come together let's, and we'll let, figure out a let's solution. Let's create a DNA database of all children well, in Texas. Yeah, I've got an idea. Well, why don't we just make it easier to identify the bodies? Yeah, and it's the kind of thing, it's like these these same people, if you asked for their DNA, would correctly, Absolutely correctly be like, that's very intrusive. Why yeah. the fuck would I give the government my DNA, but, uh, you know, when it, when it's either that or, uh, Taking any guns, restrictions yeah. on guns, well, they're gonna, they're gonna choose the DNA. Yeah. Speaking of guns, Canada, no more handguns. Oh, well, which is like, honestly, uh, like rifles, AR-15s, whatever, they get the most attention, but handgun crime in the U S is like, like if you banned handguns, but everyone could still own an AR-15, like that would make a huge fucking difference. Uh, most, most, uh, most, People shot are shot by handguns in the U.S. And not to get even more morbid with it, but it, I mean, the numbers already exist from Australia, but suicide numbers would uh, literally pl- like fall off. There would be none. Australia is the absolutely perfect case study, but no one fucking cares. Yeah. Like, well, it's uh, it's different. I'm not going to explain why it's different, but it's different. Oh, anyways, uh, scorned Russian mothers use Putin's draft to rat out deadbeat exes. Yeah, these ladies, uh, they haven't been able to get child support in years when they found out that the uh, if you join up with the Russian military, you get paid direct deposit to an account that uh, you can't hide from like it's a government bank account. So you'll be able to get that alimony and that child support. No problem. You just so all these these Russian widows are going down to local recruiting offices like. I've got just the soldier for you. He's this guy. He lives at this address. And uh, by the way, he, he owes me a shitload of money. So um, just put that straight uh, straight here. In the... 
in the purse. Yeah. And like a, a lot of these ladies, like these Russian women, absolutely brutal. They're like, yeah, it's possible that he dies, but you know, that would probably solve two problems at once. Cause I fucking hate this guy. Yeah. Brutal. War is hell. It really is. Even in the interpersonal relationships sector. No, you don't understand. I want my husband to die in the war. And that, to be fair, <laughs> it might be just as likely that that guy's like, yep, send me over. Yeah, you I'm know done. What? I've been drinking myself to death for half my life. Let's have just you, fucking do it. Have you seen this babushka? Just send me over there. I don't care. <laughs> Take my wife. We've been drinking vodka since we were three years old. We look like shit. Yeah. I, have, I somehow have post-birth fetal alcohol syndrome. It's, it's supposed to be impossible. Do you think I want to live? I've been swinging off of apartment complexes for YouTube yeah. videos. I've been trying to find a way to die every week of my life by risking my life in pointless ways and somehow I'm still here. So yeah, send me to Ukraine. I'm Fuck surprised it. you even got a hold of me. I was standing on top of a radio tower about to base jump. Or just into some snow, which I yeah. have seen before. That one's crazy. That one's so risky. It's like, you have to just have faith that there's enough fresh snow that falling off a building into it is not going to uh, kill you. And they, and they pull it off. Good for them. You know, it is one Couldn't thing about me. the old internet is like there were, you did, you were able to see consequences back in the day. Yeah, nowadays, no consequences. I've definitely seen the video of that guy falling off the building as he tries to grab onto the side oh, of it. Yeah, that's, I mean, you don't see anything, but it is. Uh, well, you know what happens. Yeah. And I've seen a lot more than that. Uh, you know, the 2000s was wild. Final headline. Newsmax TV bans reporter over wacky rant about Satan, insects and drinking blood. This what? Was, they, they, they call it wacky? I, they didn't call it wacky. Yeah. This report called yeah. it. It was uh, Laura Logan, who uh, 10, 15 years ago was like a respected mainstream. Just climbing the ranks of journalism. Correspondent. Yeah. And um, yeah, she got, got banned from Fox News like a year ago for being too crazy for them. She called like Anthony Fauci a Nazi. And they're like, okay, well, like that's what we're trying to imply but you can't just say that yeah so now yeah she gets like bumped all the way down to newsmax and she, she was... just starts spewing like QAnon shit yeah and they're like okay look again we're trying well, to imply this shit we're trying to they let yes yeah, they let her ride up into the point where she talked about very specific things that mm -hmm. i don't want to mention okay, here yeah. but uh yeah up until that point they were like completely fine with yeah, it they're like yeah we like the innuendo but when you just come out and start talking about like fucking uh satan uh having influence over the what's happening in the news like and and a lot more graphic and, stuff and yeah she was the one who lied about benghazi on 60 minutes yeah and then when she got called out for it she went way right wing yeah something something happened at that point and uh well, yeah she was fired over it i guess but people lose their jobs all the time yeah i i, I look that's just that's the the beginning of it that's where it started so uh, yeah I, yeah it's like when uh baked alaska got fired from buzzfeed but like to go from being a like foreign correspondent on a major national news the network biggest platform. to being kicked off fucking Newsmax for being too weird for them. Like what a what a fall from grace. <sighs> Sucks. But uh, she did it to herself. Did it to herself. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Uh, if you want to watch our previous episodes, they're going to be up here in just a second. Uh, we, of course, cover Liz Truss. Trussy. Getting beaten by a Trussy. head of lettuce. Yeah. Uh, also, as far as I know, the first usage of AI created art used in an episode for B-roll. And I made a uh, Boris Johnson drinking some drinks on the beach. Uh, aside from that, we also have a, what's that? A good news episode of Tech News Day? It has one piece of good news and then a bunch of bad news, but it's it starts with good news. The sugar's up front? Yeah. Wow. Anyways, those two episodes are up there right now. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week with even more episodes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.